And so I just recorded a video talking about how Spinosaurus probably wasn't an aquatic dinosaur. And now there's another dinosaur that may or may not be aquatic that's been introduced, and that's Natovenator polydontis. And it's different than Spinosaurus. It's still a theropod dinosaur, meaning it would have ran around on two legs and eaten meat, but it was also much, much smaller. Whereas Spinosaurus is one of the largest theropods, this one would actually be one of the smallest. And it's largely been sold as the first swimming dinosaur by some science news sites. The thing is, they also said this five years ago about its relative Halskaraptor. So why are there some issues with this? Why is this one now again being sold as the first swimming dinosaur? And what do we actually know about it? Well, first we actually need to understand this group. There's a few others from even earlier than Halskaraptor. These include Mahakala from 2007 and Holsenpez from 1982. And those two are honestly a lot more partial, so it makes sense we may not fully understand their kind of mode of life up until we found Halskaraptor and Natovenator, which are more complete. So selling it as the first swimming dinosaur is a little weak if you want to include some of its relatives that may have done the same thing, but also if you just include the one relative, Halskaraptor, which may have been doing the same thing. But what does the paper actually say? because what Science News says and what the papers say are going to be different because Science News needs to drive clicks and the paper itself needs to be completely accurate or as accurate as possible. And so they can be in some conflict sometimes with those news sources being a little bit dramatic. So first off, it says that it's a dromaeosaur, which makes sense. That's where we found this group before. The dromaeosaurs are things like Velociraptor or Deinonychus. They're the raptor dinosaurs. It's also from Mongolia, where a lot of its close relatives have been found. And importantly, unlike other dromaeosaurs, it seems like it may have been more streamlined. You can see this on some of the tail vertebra, where the spinous processes, the long, tall bits on top, are actually tilted back a bit more than in other animals. As a smaller animal, it might actually make more sense to streamline that tail, simply because it doesn't need that tail for that much propulsion, instead it could potentially use its wing-like arms, like a penguin almost, to fly underwater. And this is actually what's shown in one of these reconstructions here in this paper. And then they also compared it to a number of ducks, as well as some terrestrial birds and a terrestrial dinosaur that's also a dromaeosaur, Shri. What they were looking at is the angle that the ribs are actually pointed back from perpendicular to the vertebra. And so hopefully by this, they're showing that the animal may have been more streamlined. And in general, we do actually find this kind of streamlining in more aquatic animals, and specifically in more aquatic dinosaurs, including the birds. So it does seem like it may have actually been an adaptation for that kind of streamlining. But that doesn't necessarily mean it was swimming, and part of that comes from the kind of rock it was found in, and the same kind of rock that a lot of its relatives have been found in, and those are Aeolian dunes. And Aeolian just means it's a wind-blown dune, so if you think of the dunes in the Sahara or the Kalahari, it's that. Now, when we think about that kind of desert environment that is actually similar to modern-day Mongolia in some places, it is important to note that it's not all like that. You do still have streams coming through different parts of that desert, or you can have playa lakes where they are resting lakes inside of the middle of the dunes. There's a lot of other formations that were all deposited at the same time in Mongolia, and some of them are more of these kinds of playa lake type sediments. And unfortunately, they haven't been really well constrained for which ones were deposited when, but it is pretty likely they were happening at the same time. And additionally, some people have pointed out that we really don't get a lot of fossils from those more wet environments in Mongolia. So maybe they just weren't great for preserving fossils. Maybe just the mineralogy was wrong to replace the bone. There's a lot of things that could have prevented us from getting that kind of understanding of where these animals were living. And so maybe they were just more easily preserved out in the dunes. And maybe they were doing something entirely different, who knows? I mean, maybe that streamlining was just so they could squeeze into rock crevices better. It's hard to know. Although again, alien dudes, there's not necessarily a lot of rock crevices around. So right now it's really hard to say that it was the first swimming dinosaur. In part because I would say the first swimming dinosaur was Halskaraptor if we do find that out about this group, but mostly because we really need a bit better data, not just on where these animals came from, specifically within a specific section of rock, but also because we just need to do more math and more studying of the biomechanics of these animals. Because saying it's streamlined doesn't necessarily mean it was in the water. So in summary, it seems like it may have been swimming, but really we need some more work on this entire group of the Halskaraptorines, which does include Nato Venator. And hopefully then we'll get some real answers to whether or not it, or more properly Halskaraptor, was the first known swimming dinosaur.